My bike price alone is a hundred mil. If you don't have it, don't come. I'm serious. Don't come. Oh. When the bride price is paid, you become uh, a slave. You are viewed as a source of labor. In my culture, it usually ranges between $10,000 and $200,000. And you know what they usually do? I remember from my own um, traditional marriage. When you bring the money, they'll take 10 naira from it and uh, return the, the rest back to your spouse. They will tell you they are not selling their daughter. This is for you people to start your life. We interview 320 couples, so both men and women. Primary factor that correlates with bride price amount is the education of the woman. So more educated women, um, their families receive higher bride prices. Bride price is a widespread African custom. The groom pays the bride's family to marry her, often with money, livestock, or other variables. In this video, we're going to discuss the pros, the cons, and how to make sure that you're not taken advantage of, especially if you're a diasporan who's coming in Africa to marry an African woman. A fierce debate has begun. Everybody has a different opinion, especially when you're coming from a foreign country where bride price is not something that's in the culture. Of course, when you want to come to another culture, you need to try and respect the values and the culture that you come to. But at the same time, a money grab is a money grab. From what I see, there's money grabs happening all the time when foreigners come to marry women. We just got an acquaintance with an African-American guy who the family that he's looking to marry into are asking for 20 cows or $15,000. $15,000 is enough in Uganda to, to buy land or in the US to put a deposit on a house. It's the money that you can use to start your journey in life, your economic journey as a couple. And I don't think it helps the couple, couple at all if you're giving away $15,000 to the family when you could use that to, to have, you know, the beginning of your life together. So in the name of tradition, you know, they'll throw tradition at you. Oh, this is how it's always been done. This is the way it is. This is, this is how it always has been. So there must be compromises. There must be understanding. If you want to throw around tradition, traditions get abandoned. Traditions lose this, their steam. And yes, we should respect our traditions, but I'll give you an example. In Nigeria, it's common practice, or at least it used to be common practice, to cut tribal marks into a baby's face. My dad has tribal marks, my uncles, my aunts have tribal marks. And, you know, it's somewhat of a traumatizing thing to take a knife and cut the face of a baby so they'll have scars on their face forever. Now, we all understand there's a history behind it and there's a tradition behind it. But when my mum was asked, can we give me tribal marks? She said, absolutely not. Over my dead body, will you cut my baby's face? I don't care what the tradition is. So let's not pretend that traditions are concrete. Let's not pretend that all traditions are positive. And let's not pretend a money grab is, is not a money grab. There's also a debate talking about how it, it takes power away from women. It, it, it becomes an ownership and a slavery and a reason for ownership from the man's side so that, um, so that he can use her as he wishes, you know, command her so that he can take her as labor. That's obviously not always the case, but there is a history of that. That has happened. Men take advantage of these situations, just like the families take advantage of these situations. So just like a family could demand a high amount, a rich man can go and buy a wife or two or five and have them doing whatever it is he wants them to do. And if he doesn't like what they do, because he views them as some, someone he owns, um, they, they basically can have a miserable life. So again, let's not pretend that this is 
all a fairy tale and it's all just respect for culture. Each situation is individual and you've got to understand how each family treats the situation. Also, it differs from tribe to tribe. When I've discussed with other Ugandans, this family that asked for 20 cows, they asked, what tribe are they? Everyone was like, oh yeah, those guys, that tribe. That tribe is always demanding. Um, you know, in, in Nigeria, I've been to several, I mean, in my life, I don't know, hundreds of weddings, Nigerian traditional weddings. I've been a part of several. I've prostrated. I've been part of the groomsmen. I've been part of the entourage. And we often, you know, we exchange gifts. We exchange a bride price in Nigerian culture and Yoruba culture. And um, I would say the last few weddings I've been to in particular, those things have been mostly ceremonial. It's a symbol of bride price, not an actual bride price. Um, it's like some yams, some fabric, you know, something like a Bible, something that like is just symbolic of bride price. There's many approaches and, you know, you have to make sure that you look after your best interests. When I say your best interests, I don't mean the interests of the man. I'm talking about the best interest of the couple. Because you can have resentment if you come into a culture and you ask to pay this bride price and you pay it. And then later on, you realize, huh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or later on, you're struggling for finances and you're asking yourself, why the hell did I go and give thousands of dollars away to a family that don't check for me, that are not interested in having, you know, any real input into our lives beyond that is financial. Uh, but I had to pay a financial cost. Often now in modern relationships, that is well established before marriage. Like traditionally, you know, did you meet in a traditional way? Was the marriage arranged by village chiefs? You know, that was a traditional route. But now we're here on Tinder and Instagram and online and in clubs, and we're meeting just like people would meet in the West. And there's no, you know, often you move in together and you, you, start, you start life before uh, you get married. You spend time together in a modern way and you have a modern relationship. So if you have a modern relationship, um, suddenly now we have to pay attention to this historical thing. You know, it doesn't always add up. Um, the man might already be paying the bills. He might already, in the case of this guy that, that, that's been asked for 20 cows, he pays school fees, rent, groceries. I mean, the woman is already paid for. Uh, in many in, in many ways so he's already demonstrating that he's a responsible man that he can afford things and they wouldn't have asked for fifteen thousand dollars unless they, they understood they could you know like if it was a a village boy from their local area they would automatically know he's not capable of paying fifteen thousand dollars you know so like we, we, we can cherry pick, we can cherry pick and choose when we like traditional stuff, traditional values. Ah, uh, you know, it's respecting the old ways. All right, cool. There's a lot of old things that I'm sure would not benefit women if it came back, you know? You know, even the, I think the reason why they ask for that, some men don't value their ladies. So if a man finds out that, like, if a man finds out that I paid for this, that means this is worthy, my wife. It's according to how you see your girl, or your girlfriend, or the person who's going to be your wife. The value, it's what you pay. All right, so... To if me, that's what I think. Okay, so we've been dating. We've been together for over a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be coming up to two years. Mm -hmm. I'm not, we're not married yet. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Right? Mm. So in all of this time, if you haven't figured out mm. if I can treat you well, mm. if I can take care of you, mm. you haven't figured any of that out. So now, suddenly, bing, on the wedding day, I have to prove it. What about the two years we've been together? But it's not about proving it. Well, what is it about then? It's about the value. How do you see me? You, How you, do you value me? No, but you just said mm. that some guys don't respect their women. Yeah. Yeah. Some so, girls. You you, so, so, guys. okay. So we've been together for two years. Mm. Why are you with me if you don't, if I'm not respecting you? Thanks, so. Right? Mm. I, I'm sh demonstrating respect there every day, way. every day of our relationship. Okay, babe. The reason why I've spoken about respect, it's because if someone just take you, you, you don't want me to use the word free. If someone just take you without paying a blood price, without going to your parents or anything, that person can't respect you, can switch anytime they want. But yeah, if but someone went to the parents, they pay the bride price, at least they can trust, they, like they, they can respect you, they can value. You have a value. Yeah, there but is a way it's like that, that, that is in our culture. The, 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 but you don't, date, you don't date like you used to in your culture. There's an irony because on the one hand, you suddenly now say, oh, traditional values prove that you're a man. Prove that you respect me. Prove that you can handle uh, pet covering uh, and protecting and taking care of our lives. But most of the time, you're already proving that. The woman, they, you're already living together. You've already been dating for a while. You're not following any traditions when it comes to the dating. You're now just picking one tradition, which is the bride price. And not just that, family come out from the woodwork. Family you haven't spoken to in 20 years suddenly come and say, you know, you have to pay me this or you have to get me that. It is an excuse masked in tradition a lot of the time. I think it's different the way we see it. Because for me, the way I see it, it's like, you need to introduce your mind to your family. You've been proving that to me, not to my family. Some families, they, they, they want their daughters to be successful, to be good in their marriage. So not every families are asking for 20 cows. Some families are understandable. They will respect the man the way he is. They, they will allow you to come with anything you have. When you sit with my parents and they tell you that this is what we need, and you, you say what you, what you have. So my parents would sit down and tell you this is what we want. Then you also, like, it's like a negotiation. The, the compromise to be had here is to make it ceremonial. Hmm? The compromise is to make it ceremonial. If you want. You respect the culture's traditions. Mm. We're not going to be in a situation where you se spend all or a significant amount of your savings just to follow this tradition. No, because I'll tell you what trumps tradition, survival. What Trump's tradition is putting food in the mouth of your children. And so we're going we're gonna to focus on that first and maybe just give some ceremonial amount. But it's not going to be anything big. Also, uh, when I hear some of these girls, the way they're talking and demanding, like if a guy is of status and he comes to Uganda, he's going to have women lining up for him. Yes. Right? He's going to have a lot of options when it comes to women. You don't get what you deserve in life. You get what you have the leverage to negotiate. If a guy's got many options, he can choose to be with a girl that, that doesn't demand so much from a bride price. He can choose to follow his culture because someone with many options has the leverage to negotiate the deal they want for themselves. So if you're a guy and you come and there's some big bride price and there's all of this stuff, you can say, listen, no, I'm, I mean, I'm an American or I'm European. We don't follow this in my country. Yes, I'm, I'm here to respect your culture, but I'm not bankrupting myself just so that you feel like, um, you know, I'm respecting your culture. You know, we're going we're gonna to find a balance to this or this ain't going to happen. Anytime there's a situation where one party is forcing the other party, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. Like, that's going to build resentment. That's actually going to be a problem for your marriage in the long run, right? So it's, it's up to the woman to also understand the man, to negotiate and go to the family and say, 
this is how my man is. This is where he's from. In his culture, they don't do this. So, so if he tries to there's respect a, there's, him, there's, a com, there's a com, there's a compromise. <laughs> so, you know, she has to liaise between the family and him and make sure that relationship stays good. You know, it will damage her in the long run. You know, I think the most, most thing is these rich, rich people. Rich people, you know, if women, we always watch weddings. I even also sometimes show you weddings. They, ha they are brought everything, like sofas, what, what, everything. Then it, someone who doesn't have that money, maybe like they usually get worried of getting married. They feel like, ah, I may not afford that. So I think I should not marry now. You know, we end up being in a... In, mar in relationships whereby our men hasn't gone to see our parents, they have kids with us, they disrespect us, like, so we- Well, that's just a problem of people not being able to stay living within their means. Yeah. And it, it's, there's couples that make that decision, oh, we're gonna break the bank and borrow money to have our wedding day. Man, you see this field over here? See this field here? Just this area here? Me, I can get married in this place here. I can get married there, no problem. In this place? Yeah, I don't care. I honestly do not care about the ceremony. I really don't. I just, I'm happy. I'm happy to have a good marriage. The ceremony is just going to be one day. It's going to go. My parents have been married for 50 years. 50 years? Yeah, my parents have been married for 50 years. They're still together now. They got married at 7 a.m. with two witnesses, a priest, before they went to work on a Monday morning. Wow, that was so simple. Tell me, would you rather have a big wedding or would you have a good, good marriage? <laughs>